Yo, what's up guys? Titanhawk here again today, and I'm going to show you how to use the ball chasing API for Rocket League. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So before we get started to actually coding our API access, we want to make sure we get ourselves an authorization key. If you go to the ballchasing.com API documentation, which will be linked down below in the description, you'll see here at the top of the page, you can go ahead and retrieve or generate a new API token here. When you load this page at first, it's gonna prompt you to sign in with Steam. But for me, I'm already signed in, as you can see up here. And then your API key will be right here. If you do not see an API key, you can go ahead and hit this refresh button or this regenerate button, and it will generate one for you. But once you got that, make sure you copy and paste it onto your clipboard, and then we can go on and head into VS Code. It's also worth noting that this is also how you would generate a API key for the Bacchus Mod plugin when you're playing Rocket League, if you so choose. Now we are back here inside Visual Studio Code, and as you can see, I've already installed the node pack, node module, excuse me, that we are going to need to get this to work. The first thing you'll notice is a .env and the node fetch. .env, you can go ahead and just run down here in the terminal, npm install .env, you wanna spell it all out. The next thing you wanna do, in order to make the API calls, we're gonna use the node fetch module. And to install that, you wanna run npm install node fetch, and we wanna install a specific version. If you've seen my previous videos with the start GG API, you'll know that I like using version 3.2.10. And that for me is I found to be most consistent and I have found it easy to use and pretty straightforward to go with. So we are now ready to go ahead and add an ENV file for our authentication token. You can go ahead and call this variable whatever you want, but inside your .env file, I'm going to call this ball chasing underscore token. And then when you got your token or your authorization API token, whatever you'd like to call it from the ball chasing API, you can go ahead and paste it inside here as a string. Once you got that done, we are ready to begin coding. So here I've created a file index.js here within the root directory of the project. And I've already added in our two imports from our node modules. You can see here that fetch has a bit of a weird syntax, but that is just how we can go ahead and make sure it will reliably call the API with the data we request, and we will be able to get it in return. Then also we just add in our required.env.config here to load in our env variables, more specifically our ball chasing API token. So now the next thing we want to do here is we need to make sure we have it ready what URL we want to contact with our fetch function or what one what endpoint are we trying to hit. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and do the ball chasing group URL. There are two URLs with the ball chasing API that I will show you later in the video, but essentially you can either get the statistical information from a, re a singular replay or a group of Rocket League replays. But for this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the ball chasing group uh, endpoint. As we go ahead and type out https.com or ballchasing.com slash API slash groups. And I'll put another slash here. Then all we have to do here is just add on the ID of the replay group. And I will again show you that later on in the video. Now, to make things really easy for you guys to add your own functions to this, we're going to go ahead and create a base function here called get data. So we can go ahead and declare it. We want to make sure this is async. This is going to take in a URL. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to call the API. So you can see here, it's taking a URL and not an ID. That's because eventually we can add another variable here for the singular replay group. That way you can just reuse this function for both the singular replay and the group replay or the replay group, excuse me. So here, now all we have to do is just return await fetch URL. And then here, all of this, all the methods in here in this tutorial will be a get. And remember with uh, post APIs and, and RESTful APIs, there are four main methods. There's your get, post, put, and delete. Mainly we're going to be uh, getting data here. You can also have post and delete if you own the API or if you own the replay group or the individual replay, that is up to you. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get stats from replay groups. Then for your headers, there are two that we want to pass in. We want to make sure we pass in content type 
And you can probably guess this will be application slash JSON. And then the last thing we need to do is pass in an authorization, which will be process.env.ballchasing underscore token. This, this ball chasing token, this should match whatever you have declared in your ENV file. So if you called it uh, ball chasing underscore API, then you would change this to be ball chasing underscore API. Whatever it is that you have defined in the ENV file should be here. Then the last thing we want to do is to make sure this is actually readable. Then we just want to add a dot then response arrow response dot JSON. And just like that, this function here is going to handle all of the API requests that we send to ball chasing. So before we proceed any further, let's go ahead and head back to the documentation to see what data we can expect to receive. As I mentioned again, I will put a link to the documentation down below in the description. So here we are looking at the get a specific group endpoint here. So you can see here, it's going to be slash groups slash ID. And I'll show you how to get the ID when we go ahead and test this at the end of the video. But as you can see, this is a get request. And then the only thing that is required that we must make sure we pass in is a string of the replay group ID. So you'll see here as well that we've already set this up to make sure we pass in our headers for content type JSON. And then here is the body that we can expect. So here on the documentation is an example of when RLCS season six grand finals happen we can go ahead and make sure that we can get all the data from this. So you can see here, it's broken down up at the top with the general information, who created the lobby, is the replay shared, how are we identifying the players, when was it created, the status, the name, and so on. But here is mainly more what we're looking for. We are looking for players. Now inside players, you'll notice here that it's got the square bracket, which means that this is a list. This is gonna be a list of players for everyone that was in the replay group. So we can see here that, you know, for gimmick back when this was on, back when he was on cloud nine, if you're familiar with Rocket League players and their team history, we can see that this is when gimmick was on cloud nine. He was playing the game through Steam as it was not available through Epic Games yet. He was, this is his ID. And then here we can go ahead and see how many games he played, how many of those games he won, his win percentage, his how long he played for or how long those five games lasted collectively his core stats which were his shots his sh the shots he gave up goals goals against and so on these core stats here is what we're going to be looking to obtain now you can also obtain a lot more detailed information here now remember this is just cumulative so this is all throughout the five games that were played so we can get all of the boost stats the movement stats positioning and the demos. Now notice here, if you don't want cumulative and you prefer to get the average stats per game, you can get that as well by looking at the game average attribute. Then here, it's going to be the same categories, but instead it will go ahead and give you more likely floating numbers because these are gonna be decimals and it's just better to compute the averages that way. But you can see all this data here is something we can get just by giving the ID for this endpoint. So let's go ahead back into VS Code and get ready to test this out. So here inside VS Code, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to make a new function. So here, we're going to call this const get player group core stats. So again, here, if you remember, we wanna get, we're gonna do this for a replay group. That way, if you want to make a same function, except only for a replay, you can, re you can pretty much copy and paste this and just rename the function. And then here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure this is async because we're gonna to need to call this get data function, which is also async. And then here, we're gonna to wanna to pass in the group ID and the player name we are trying to get. And then if you remember this group ID, this is gonna be part of the URL. We're essentially just going to append that onto this ball chasing group URL. So now this is going to be pretty easy to do. So we just go ahead and make sure we get our response, which we wanna make sure is a constant. Then we will call await get data, the ball chasing group URL plus the group ID, because we know that with this is the way this is structured, we just need to append the group ID onto the end of it. 
Then just as a quick precaution, we can go ahead and say if the response is null, we know there was an error here. So we can go ahead and just return. If we want, we can even add a console.log statement. We can say no data received from ball chasing API. Then down here, the next thing we're going to do is first we need to ensure that we check for the player. So we can do for i equals zero, i is less than response dot players dot length i plus plus. Now, if you remember, players is a list because it had those square brackets when we looked at the documentation. So here we can say if response dot players i dot name because remember they all have the name attribute if that's equal to the player name then we found the player if we want and here we can just do console dot log response dot players i and then here we can go ahead and do game average or cumulative depending on the stat you want to get for here i will do cumulative make sure i can spell that right dot core and this here will go ahead and print out all of the cumulative stats. I'll real quick after I finish recording this little segment, I will make sure I spelled this correctly. Make sure you spelled this correctly. Otherwise this will turn, this will cause an error as this will be undefined and you cannot access an element of an undefined attribute as that will cause an error. As soon as we've done that, we can go ahead and return because we found everything. So other than checking to make sure we spell cumulative correctly, we are now ready to go ahead and test. So I've one thing I've done real quick in between the segments here is I've gone ahead and exported this function into a, a separate file as test.js. We've imported it here and I am going to try to do this. However, I will not be using this series here as this series will not exist. If you try running this, you, your program will crash and will say, that inside here in index that players is going to be undefined because this response is not going to contain an attribute players it is going to be an error response because simply this ball chasing group now no longer exists luckily i have a good friend of mine who actively uses ball chasing he has a replay group so i will go ahead and get that data and i will go ahead and replace it with this in just a few seconds and i'm back so you'll notice right away that this looks a lot different so a good buddy of mine is chez he is a uh, collegiate rocket league competitor and he just created a new group called the cca west open four with his team so we go ahead we went ahead grabbed the id from there and if you're wondering what the ID is, is it essentially you're going to see at the top of the ball chasing website. When you look at a replay group, it'll be something like ballchasing.com slash group slash. And then here will be it will look exactly like this. This will probably be what the URL will look like. It's going to be this here at the bottom. You'll notice that the replay group name is going to be probably the first chunk of characters followed by a random sequence of characters after that. So we can go ahead and run this now and we can go ahead and see what kind of data we get. And just like that, not only was not only did we get our data, but we actually were able to get it pretty fast. So here we got the cumulative data. So in the fourth CCA open of all the matches that Chez played in, he had 67 shots. There were about 133 shots against them. He scored 24 goals, gave up 49 goals, got uh, 25 saves, 15 assists. His total score was uh, almost 9,000. Shooting percentage was about 36% and he did not get MVP a single time, but these are still pretty solid stats regardless. Now, the best part is you can just replace this with anyone else that's in this replay group and you will get all these stats for that individual. So just like that, we have proven that we are able to successfully get replay group stats from the ball chasing API. Now, again, you can do this with singular replay as well. It doesn't just have to be groups. You can even upload your own replays here as you follow the documentation, a lot of more, a lot more detail and instruction is listed on there, which will be down below in the description. Otherwise, then that concludes this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and get away you don't miss out on any other tutorials or other content I create down the road. 
If there's a specific API you would like me to see or something with the ball chasing API you would like to see me do a video on, let me know in the comments section down below. Otherwise then, my name is TitanHawk17, wishing you all a fantastic rest of your day, wherever you may be.